I want to turn to First Peter. Before we get started, I want to do this. Uh, First Peter chapter number two. But before we do that, I got a text message here a few weeks ago, and uh, it ended by saying, I don't know if they were trying to be mean or hateful or what, but anyway, it said, I hope you get exactly what you want. Sounds like a great, like great thing to me, but anyway, I don't think they meant it quite that way. But I got to think about it, Brother Silas, and you know what I want? I want to see the lost soul of one of Jesus. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 I'll probably look at exactly what I want. Yeah. I, want to see the, I want to see the church grow. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see the backsliders back in church. Right. Been gone for a year, two years. Some people, well, they've been gone for two and a half years now. Mm. And had any communication or other than all, nothing. Not seen, not even seen in the stores. Not even seen in the stores. Sad. So what did I want? I want to see y'all grow. I want to see the, I want to see new converts grow in the Lord. I know what it takes to do that though. And many are neglecting to do what they need to do to grow in the Lord. They're not in the services. They're not in the church. They're not in their Bible. They're not in uh, Sunday school. Bible study. They're not in those things. And it's critical. It's critical that we get them there. And it's important that we try to do our best to, to, to get them there. We need to be, we need to be prepared to, to, to teach, preach, okay? And, and get people, get people on the Word of God. They've got to get on the Word of God. I know what it took for me because I was ignorant and, and still am, so that's the thing. But I was ignorant to the Word of God. I didn't realize some things that, that, it, that it said in the Bible. I had heard passages of Scripture quoted, but it didn't mean much to me until I got in the Word of God myself. You need to get in it yourself to really understand it. See, people are real confused about what the Word of God said sometimes. They twist it and get it turned around. Get it all twisted and turned around. They don't understand what church is all about. And what church means. And the importance of church. Church is important, God. Uh, the, the Lord died for it. The Lord died for the church. Now, I'm not talking about the brick walls and the, and the, and the paint on the wall. I'm not talking about the pews and the, and the, and the auditorium. I'm talking about people, yeah. the church. You are the church. Yes. Now, I know it's a holiday. I realize a lot of people out of town would have probably more here than we have tonight if they were in town. But still, we need to, you know what aggravates me a lot? <clears throat> and I, if, I hit it, if I hit it your ball, you know, in like your, your back door, and you just kind of bite your tongue, hold on. Brother, Brother Ethan, I hear all the time, well, we won't be there, you know, Sunday night. We got a reunion. We'll get together and eat some hot dogs and cook some hamburgers. Why does everybody do that on Sunday? Why does it always be on Sunday? Or even Wednesday, even Wednesday nights. Why does that be that way for the tours? They gotta have those things on Sunday. Uh, it, it, that aggravates me. It's called priorities. Huh? It's called priorities. Oh yeah, but they got them all mixed up. Yeah, right. It's called priorities and they're all mixed up. You're right. Huh? So I thought I'd give y'all an opportunity tonight too. Just to tell me what y'all want. What is it exactly that you want for the church? What do you want for the church? Brother Ethan, what do you want for the church? Good. We need it. We need it. And it can happen. It can happen. That great awakening can happen again. God's in, see, God's in charge of that. You know, we're not in God. But it's got to start with us. Yeah, it's got to start with us. It's got to start right here. And we gotta we gotta make the first move, you might say. Okay? He's waiting on us. Right. He said, hey, it's out here. But hey, he said, it's here. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it revival? Right. Right. How bad do you want to see the church filled to capacity? Yes, 
I was reading something just, just maybe yesterday, could have been this morning, I don't know. But I was reading something that said, Brother Michael said, I can remember the days when they had to bring chairs in and put them out in aisles. Miss Kitty shaking her head, Gail, Brent, and Jim, and but hey, Randy, y'all, we, we've seen those days. We've been a part of those days. I've seen when they'd set a tent up across the street my aunt's house on, on the kids' Lord Avenue in Westview. And you think, oh, they're going to have a week revival. And I'll have about a month revival. <laughs> right. I don't know how he did it, but he kept that advantage and said, we're going to go another week. We're going to go another week. You know? And it may go two, three, four, five, six weeks. Or I don't know. I can't remember exactly. Go, it seemed like it continued as a part. It continued on and on and on. Why do we not see that anymore? Why do I not see that anymore? Have we gotten lazy? Yeah. Or have we raised up a generation that don't know Jesus? Yeah. Don't understand. Well, I tell people, I've told people this for years, ever since we started Fair Haven and been Baptist Church, they said, what, what direction are you headed? I said, back about 75 years. I like to just get back about 75 years, mm -hmm. maybe 100. I, I need to for 50, okay? But get back what we used to have. It can happen, y'all. Brother Bob, you know it can happen. If the, if the people, if the church will allow it to happen. Amen. Will allow it to happen. Amen. That's good, Brother Eden. Brother, Brother Alex, what do you want? What do you want? I want to see our kids ministry grow. Uh, what? I want to see our kids ministry grow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> if it don't, we're dead. Yeah. Right. We're down. Yeah. We're down. If our, if our youth doesn't grow in the Lord, if we don't get them in here, we're going to die, y'all. I mean, we, we see every day, <clears throat> Randy just tell me that Rich Lewis uh, passed away over in Memphis. So did you say that was your grandson's daddy or? Uh, Father-in-law. Father-in-law, okay. Father-in-law. 62 years old? 62 years old. I was reading in the obituary, I just saw an obituary, I didn't know that Sandra Bailey had died. Sandra Bailey, she's getting there. I didn't know she died. Died back like June the 16th, 12th, 17th, something like that. I didn't know it. I didn't know it, nobody got it. So you know that, none of that family much is around anymore that knows us, and we know them. We've all died out. We're dying out. We're dying out. Like I said this morning, if I live to be 85, I got I, I have eight more years. I may not live to be 85. I may not live to be 78. But don't you worry about me, okay? You, you, you can come see me later, okay? I'll still be around up there, all right? But if our youth doesn't, and we, and we the old gray-haired saints, better get a hold of it. We got to support that. What I see a lot of times is, and we were talking, Brother Mike and I were talking about it, <clears throat> trying to get a 15 pastor van. Mm. I said, well, I've been hearing that it's cheaper to buy a new one than it is to buy a new one. Because these huge car things are going out to see it. They're outrageous. I said, well, think about it. If we want to buy a 30 or 40, 50,000 dollar, 50, 15 pastor van to haul bus kids in. They'll tear it up pretty quickly. They'll tear it up pretty quickly. But do we do, do we want to do that? Probably not. But we get us a good 15 passenger bus, maybe coming out of retirement, retiring it out of the school system or something. They carry 14 kids at a time, get a couple of them. We've had them before. We bought that little mini bus back in back in 2004. We bought that. The church has been going for about a year. We bought a little mini bus. It ran for 200,000 miles, okay? And we gave it to a church for them to have to use. But hey, first thing we think of when we think of bringing kids in, oh, they're going to tear up everything. <laughs> they're going to tear up everything. Oh, they'll tear up this, they'll tear up that. Hey, it's just stuff, y'all. Yeah, well, you're right, sir. Right. It's stuff worth the soul. Brother Randy, it's stuff worth the soul. Yeah. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Stuff ain't worth my soul. A child's soul. I mean, I've seen, well, we got in our own congregation, and Jim was, I think, 16 years old. Miss Linda, you were probably young, and you got saved too, weren't you? I say young, younger than I. I was 29. Uh, but again, sent you that. Uh, brought up in church, saved five 
five years old, I lived right, five years old. It stuck, buddy. It stuck. She's still in it. And she's in it as deep as she ever has been. See, if you can get them when they're that age, get them when they're young, get them when they hey, that, that's prime, y'all. That's prime. And we need to think about that. Reaching the youth. Mm -hmm. Put some money into that. Reach down our pockets and, 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 and put something toward that. Uh, you, you're, you know what? Don't worry about building up the treasure here. Okay? But I'm going to guarantee you, there ain't going to be no armored car behind that hearse. Okay? You are not going to take it with you. Okay? Put it into some youth. Put it into the church. Put it into souls here. And get your reward up there. Get your treasure up there. Okay? All right? Well, Amy, you got something where you want. Huh? Ain't you got something you want? Well, you want. Church around. Bus route. Bus route is a church road. <laughs> okay. He wants a church bus. How many you want? Many as you get, don't you? Yes, All right. You're going to be a captain, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I think you're a church. Well, we just talked about that. Mm -hmm. We can get us, uh, we can get us a, a big bus. Got to have CDL driver. But God can send a CDL driver. They went out visiting yesterday and found a CDL driver. Yeah. They're going to proselyte him. <laughs> He's in another church. They will cross him. They will go to no end. <laughs> we'll pay him. No, we won't pay him. <laughs> but hey, we need a bus. We need many buses. I, I understand, and this is sad because I came out of this church, Middle Tennessee Baptist, running eight, ten buses. Ran one bus all the way to Nashville, Miss Kim. Danny Mayo was a captain. Oh, ran all the way to Nashville. When I say East Nashville, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yep. One of the roughest series of Nashville you can go into. Bring back on 60 passenger bus, bring back 85. Yep. 85 kids on a 60 passenger bus. Packed in there everywhere. Sitting in each other's laps and whatever. We worry about hey, getting, getting all the qualifications and uh, going by the law. Ain't no law. <laughs> Ain't no law of that. Pile them in there, okay? Pile them in there. Put them in there. Pack them on the side you can. Danny would preach to them coming out of the national. <laughs> preach to them going back in the <laughs> Had about a good 45 minutes to an hour with a, a singing song. Okay? Now, 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 Middle Tennessee Baptist running two buses. Mm. Running two buses. Isn't that sad? And that's sad. But you know what I see about that? I think Abel will agree with me. That's a wonderful opportunity for us. That's a wonderful opportunity for us. Not to wish them anything bad, but hey, we can we can pick up right there, we can pick that ball up and go get some kids. Go get some kids. I don't care about playing gun here, cars, fans, whatever. How we can get them, let's get them, okay? Let's get them. Let's get the kids in here. Let's make this place. Hey, they talk about having a junior church down here. Don't disturb us up here. Hey, now don't disturb me. I'll just keep on preaching. I'll just keep on listening, okay? Yeah. I love to hear kids. I love to I love to see Kimmy run on my toes all the time. I love to see little Easy come in my office and reach it up there for that candy. I every day he comes in. He, 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 he come this Miss Megan does here. Come to that he come around that corner and he'll stop. And he'll go like this. Don't you touch that. Mama says you can't. That you can't. Hey, that's that's what we gotta have, y'all. Right. We gotta have these kids. We gotta have young people in here. Not just that age. I want that age. But I want some teenagers in here. Yeah. I'll see some teenagers in here. Uh, I, I'm thrilled to that. Brother Brother Alex, he had his brother here today, and Anna, she's been coming with him. That thrills me. It encourages me. Or it encourages you. I know this is a small crowd of our folk, but this will encourage us, y'all, that we got that we got we we're seeing some life come in. Yeah. What what we basically see, we see some death going out. Is what we see. We don't see the life coming in. See, we don't realize what God is doing right now. Okay. How many of you read the bulletin today? That pruning hook. Okay. God's got a pruning hook, y'all. Yes, sir. And it comes a time when he has to do some pruning. 
And we think it's bad. That's kind of what it's kind of what Joseph said to his brothers. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. It's kind of yeah. one of those yeah. things. Right. So we don't see it a lot of times that way. We see the other side. We go, oh, well, what's going on? And that stuff gets to flame and through like a wildfire. Start going all through the church like a wildfire. And what's so bad about it? What is so bad about it is no one ever, ever comes to me. They never come to me. Never come to me. I thought it odd and I read something where someone quoted that uh, we had brought leadership in too quickly. Our bylaws don't say that. It talks about a deacon. It talks about a deacon being one year. But it don't say it. I, I think back of Miss Reba Covington and Jean Covington. I mean, my goodness. When she walked in that door over on Rushwood Drive that morning and I saw her and Brother Jean, I thought, what is going on? And I, they said in the audience for well, week two, I said, Miss Rick, won't you up here on this piano? Uh, her eyes lit up. She got on the piano. And most of y'all who knew her and know her well, she didn't join the church for probably, I don't know, this kid, it may have been two or three years before they ever joined, officially joined the church. But do you think I wasn't going to use her? That would have been crazy. That's been the craziest thing I could. This is a lady who's been playing the, since she's probably, what, 12, 13 years old, this kid? I mean, Brother Wood, uh, Woodrow sent her off. She's playing the, And I ain't going to use her. I think God would have punished me for that. Yeah. Saying, hey, you got a talent, mm -hmm. and you're not using it. Right. When you see talent, when you see people come into a church that want to serve God, I mean, you don't have to sit there and, and, and call up the FBI and check on them. Right. <laughs> hey, you don't have to run through the FBI. You see, what happens is, Brother Randy, you automatically know their heart as soon as you get to talk to them. You know, what they're, you know why the Lord has sent them to you. You don't have to worry about it. You just do. Hey, and that's at the pastor's discretion, y'all. That's right. The pastor will make that decision. Okay. Don't you worry about it. If he makes the wrong one, he'll answer for it. Okay? And that may be exactly what he wants. Okay? But it's not as good as you want, man. I like to see individual spiritual growth. Give it to me one more time. I like to see individual spiritual growth. Individual spiritual growth. That's going to take place. And they got to get in the individual. We ought to want to, I heard a man say it one time, a preacher. He said, if you've been saved five years, you ought to be a teacher for now. I got thinking back, brother, even on my own life. In probably four or five years, I was teaching. I didn't want to. They see Bucky, my School to such a good teacher. He said, I'm going on vacation, I want you to teach for me. I said, I can't do that. He said, Oh, yes, you can. I, said, I can't do that. He said, Yes, you can. You can do it. And that's where it started. And here's where it's ended. <laughs> you know, ended up there. But you're a big to You're a big to teach others. You shouldn't just be sitting and stagnated, being getting stagnated. I think we get a little gray hair on our head and we think we're done. We've done, it. We've done all we can do. We don't have to do no more. No. No, I always talk about Brother Roy Adams. <laughs> Many of y'all knew Brother Roy. He was uh, one of our assistants when we took over the uh, Rushwood Baptist Church back in 2004. He would go out every Tuesday. We'd go out about 12 of us on, on that little bus I was talking about. We'd go out busy. We'd go out busy. He'd have a cane in both hands at 82 years old. A cane in each hand, walking in the street. Now, it took me and him a while to get out of the street, but he was determined to go fishing. Determined to go fishing. He loved to go fishing. He loved to invite people. Him and Sharon, his daughter, you never went to a funeral if they weren't there. 
You never went to the nursing home if they weren't there. You never went to the hospital that he wasn't busy at some point. Matter of fact, it broke my heart for him because he, he was in an old school, Miss Gillen. Do you remember when we used to just, uh, by the preacher, he'd walk in people's room, you know, start talking to him. But he walked into a room. People called downstairs, told them they didn't want him up there no more. He was trying to win them to the Lord, I guess, tell them about Jesus. So the administration said he couldn't come back to the hospital anymore. Shut him down. Shut him down. That's sad. So he's doing good. They call, they call good and evil and evil good. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing good. They said that's bad. That's bad. He lost his job. Let me tell you how he went into full-time uh, ministry. He's fired from his job. Worked at a meat company. You know, Brother Jim, that John Blocker, a meat company, told the insurance man about Jesus. He went to Mr. Jones and said he didn't like that. Mr. Jones fired him. And that's what he quoted all the time. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. He said, because I lost my job, I went to full-time ministry. Yeah, amen. Got fired in the full-time ministry. Hey, God knew. God knew. God knew. When you get each individual spiritually filled, spiritually filled. But you got to have their glass turned up right. you got to have your cup turned up right. If you're going to get it, if you're going to get it, you can't sit here with a, with a sultry look on your face and say, I don't know where he gets off telling me something like that. Well, he just told you what's in here. He just told you what's in here. He ain't, uh, uh, hey, I know you don't want my opinion. I probably don't want your opinion. You don't want to hear my opinion. It ain't worth no more than yours is probably worth. But this one is worth. Yeah, right. This opinion is worth a whole bunch. Right. And we better get it in. We've got to be a doer of it, not just a hearer. Okay? Right. Yeah. Okay. George, you got anything you want about Well, I, I'd like a lot of things, but uh, I, most of it's been thought, said already. But uh, I'd like to see that choir full. Yeah. yeah. You know, we used to have a big choir up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that you know, used to? Yeah, used to. I just really like the word used to. Yeah. I don't like that word used to. Okay, yeah. They used to talk about Riverview all the time. Used to. Used to. Well, you know, you were here with us. You know, used to run. Two and three hundred. Used to. Used to. Still can. Yeah. Yeah. Still can. We got we still got this we still got this same amount of seats on. Right. And we'll bring out chairs. Yep. We got chairs. We'll bring out chairs. We'll sit them down the aisles here. I understand. Hey, we'll let the choir up. That too. It got so it got so in Rushwood we had to leave the choir up. Mm -hmm. the, 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 that little church would hold about eighty and we'd run about eighty-five or so. Many times there'd be three or four people sitting behind me in the choir. But that was great. That was great. That's what that's what we wanted. But when you get to the point of where people have to turn around and leave the church because they don't know where to park or sit, it's time you've made a move to be able to do something. Okay? You get over 75%, you better start thinking about building. Knock it. This wall back here is made to come right out. When they built this in, they built that wall where you just knock it out and extend it on out that way. Okay? So we can grow right here if we need to. But we got five acres out trying to grow too. And I pray, and that's one of the other things I want. I want to see a church out there someday. I may have to see it from the windows of heaven. <laughs> but I want to see a church out there. So you young people better get ready to build one out there, okay? All right, y'all get ready to build one. Michael, what do you want? Well, I've done a whole lot kind of actually. <laughs> I, well, never mind, I'll come back to you later. <laughs> I don't have time. I've got a pretty big vision for this place, of course, but I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to see at least one soul that is saved, baptized, and discipled, all three of them, you know, from beginning to end, but 
I wish I'd like to see more than that. But Amen. You know, if you think about how long I've been here, I've been here for close to four months now. And, uh, and this is a reality in a lot of churches, but you know, I, I've yet to see someone baptized here. And in fact, and these are hard realities that we deal with, but in fact, I don't even know whether our baptistry works. I mean, I'm sure maybe it does, but there are, there are bugs in it. There are bugs in it right now, full of bugs. And, uh, and you know, the truth hurts sometimes, but we've got to, we've got to see people saved, baptized, add it to the church and disciple. And I'd love to see that. I'd absolutely love to see that. Yeah. Well, the bastard works real good. I'm not sure. <laughs> Matter of fact, it works better. All you got to do is, Brother Randy, <clears throat> in this very room, keep it up when we're ready to baptize. I get it ready. Just go in there and push a button once the water's in. I like that. Push a button. I remember when we used to have to put a heater down in it. We got it now where you push a button. I like just pushing a button. Okay. But I agree with you. The baptistry needs to get it. Needs to get it. We need to keep watering it all the time. Yeah. Need to have water in all the time. Didn't take much to keep it heated up. I care like I said, we just push a button. We just push a button. I'd like to see these ten souls that y'all seen one to the Lord in the last three months. I'd like to see them in the church. I'd like to see them baptized. I'd like to see them grow. I know that we went out when we left, when we left the little storefront. When we left the storefront after one year, we had 27 people need to be baptized. 27 people need to be baptized. One the Lord, they need to be baptized. We didn't have a baptistry. Okay? So when we went to Rushwood, we put in a baptistry. We put in one. As a matter of fact, it was, I can't remember Bill's last name, from out of um, uh, Missouri. A brown uh, St. Louis, Missouri, who has come to Tony's church every year for a big meeting. He 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 called me. He said, "Brother, I hear you need a bachelor, so we got one. We're gonna give you. So we'll bring it down there and put it in. It's one of those stand behind. You just stand there, brother Randy. You know, never, I never had to get wet under my hand. You know, the craziest thing." was all the time we visited and all the folk we want on the street. I can't tell you how many on those little Tuesday morning runs we made. One lady came to church and sat right out there by the window and at the service over, raised her hand and said, I, I want to say something. I said, it's fact, go ahead. Because I knew who she was. Let's go ahead. She said, I got saved. By that man right over there, I don't know who it was. I think it's Brother Boyd Stiles. Yeah, it was Brother Boyd. Brother Boyd let her go. said, For that man right over there last week, and, and, and I just want to come and let y'all know about it. Amen. One in probably a hundred. Why? Why is that? Now, we want to say, well, did they really get saved? That's not for us to say. Right. That's right. That's not, that's not our problem. Yeah. No, no. I, I think that church people have got the wrong, again, the wrong view of church. See, what I see in church <laughs> is this was my family. Okay, y'all are my family. Uh, my family is pretty dysfunctional, I'll be honest with you. They're very much so. But you're my family. And hopefully not all y'all are, but. <laughs> I do know some of y'all. Very good. No, no, y'all are my family. And I look forward to every time we can get together. Yesterday was wonderful. Was I tired when I left there yesterday? I was beat to the ground. I was literally beat to the ground. I went in, sat down on the couch, and went to bed at 7 o'clock. I was beat. But you know what? It was a good beat. It was a good beat. I enjoyed every minute of it. The, the fun y'all are having, the smiles on y'all's face, the enjoyment of the food, the enjoyment of the fellowship. See, that made me, it's like I used to go to my aunt's for family reunion back in the, you know, the 50s and 60s. It was a good time. It was a good time. And that's where we need to look at each other. Linda Lewis is going through a lot right now. Okay? She's heartbroken. I can't imagine. Going in 
and buy the truck. I couldn't sleep from the night. Because Katie went to bed, said she was hurt. And all I could think of was that's what Kevin told Miss Linda. He said his stomach was hurting. His stomach was hurting. But she said the way he eats, he, he'd do that often. It was bad. So the way he eats, it puts it past the gun. But she went in there at 5.30 and found him cold, face down with his pillow. She's hurting now. Mm -hmm. And because she's hurting, we ought to be hurting. Yeah. We should be hurting. She told me probably the funeral will be Friday up in Woodbury. But I want us to feed that thing. I want us to feed them this gift. I want us to feed them all. Make arrangements for food if I need to. I'll get catered in. But we want to feed them. And I've already heard, you know, well, she's not a member of the church. They got that to do with God. Right. <laughs> right. My Lord. Let's don't get so picky, okay? Let's don't get so picky. Uh, so, well, I'm a member. We don't have, according to, you know, the, our bylaws, we don't have to do that to people. Well, we ain't good at it. Call the Bible, I'm going to call with love. Right. We're, going show, we're going to show her love. Right. Amen. I mean, people Amen. come to church. Hey, people come to church to be loved on them. You're right. They don't want to get beat up all the time. Right. Now, this right here will beat them up some. I ain't going to say it won't. But every time this right here is going to beat up some people. Right. But that's what's, hey, that's what's, that's what's in here. And you just got to preach whole council. So the beating up comes all the <laughs> exhorting <laughs> this yeah. way. Right. But hey, again, let's love on her. She has no family in here. Her son lives down in Chattanooga. And I think she's got a, I think she's got a sister-in-law lives here. Here was their plan. She sat in her place. Gonna go to Chattanooga and live with her son. Kevin couldn't wait. She's there every day in the afternoon. About mama when we're going to Chattanooga. She'd get out to Calvary and show them the market. Marking off the days, okay. God had another plan, y'all. God had another plan. We don't, we, we don't have to understand it. We just have to be accepting that God had another yep. plan, right? But now what's she going to do? She's going to sell her place and do what? After she's, I don't know. She was going down there because he was going to a, have, a, I think, a special school he was going to or some kind of work or something. She had it all planned out for him. That's all changed now. That's all changed now. So we need to love on her. And she moved to Chattanooga, that's fine too. That's God, that's God's will for her life. That's what that's what will happen, okay? So again, that's what we're all about, is that we're we're a family. And we need to we need to re always remember that. My brother and I fought like dogs and cats. I mean, we fall all the time. There was nobody I loved, and I, 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 I literally always idolized my brother. I would be just like my brother, but I was a lot better looking. <laughs> you know the feeling. Give me some love. <laughs> hey, no, I want to be just like him. He, he, he was a wonderful, wonderful person and a great salesman. I want to be like that. I want to be like my brother. Hey, we're to love one another. Yeah. No matter what. Now, hey, we may have a few, we may have a five. You may not agree with me on everything, but don't you're wrong. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you be wrong, go to. Hey, no, you may not agree with me on everything. But hey, we can get past all that. My goodness, we can't get we can't get past that. We're in trouble. Yeah. We're in trouble, we are. We're in trouble. <laughs> we're ripping anything you want. Listen, you want to wire, I know. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be great. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been in this church for a long time. And I see you going through the ups and downs, but overall, I think we just need a, an excitement about what's going on. And, and look for the positive. Look for the positive that God can do in our church. Yeah, he can do it. He's not done with us. No. Not by any means. Just because we see the views 
send people now, let us be here in October. Right. Yes. Right. Hey, we had we had 45 walk out one time. I mean, they didn't. They weren't really mad. They just went with the guy who started a church out of our church. Went out there. They weren't really mad. They just left. Well, okay. We just went back building again. We just stayed in the old way. We just, hey, we just stayed. We just stood fast. Don't move. We just kept on going. That's all you can do, God. That's all we can do. I know I'm. I know I'm preaching to the choir. I'm not preaching to the back of the church tonight. And I ain't preaching, I'm just talking, but hey, hey, this is the one that's going to make it happen right here. Right. You're going to hang in there, you're going to hang in there, and we're going to make it go, okay? Because God's going to do it. We're not going to do it in it. I mean, it's this morning. It, 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 hey, it's Him, not us. That's right. It's Him, not us. We can't take any credit. I never take credit for what God does. Right. He allowed me to get in on it. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it for Him. He allowed me to get in on it. I think it's wonderful that we can do that. Maybe one more. Brother Randy, you got anything you want? Uh, I mean, just Randy here. I'm sorry, there's two Randy. Oh, how did I name y'all? Randy one, Randy two, Randy one, Randy two. We had people when he's older. Oh, he, he's older. <laughs> <laughs> A lot older. Well, brother two, what do you. Well, I'm going to say, young people, brother. Yeah, I'm sorry to say that. We need some money. And not only that, but I also want to see the older folks more vigilant and teaching the young people. There you go. There you go. Because that's, that's the way they learn. Yeah. Well, the older women are to teach the younger women. Yes. Us men are to teach the younger men. Yes. Uh, again, Brother Michael is starting a couples class. And he's a little concerned because I think he told me he'd been married 10 years. He wants to teach on marriage. But I think he qualifies 10 years, you know. It ain't 50, but it's 10, okay? He's going to be in here. <coughs> it's coming out of here. Right? Right. How, to, how to keep your marriage together. Right. This is what keeps your marriage together. Yes, yes, sir. So it ain't anything that he can't handle, okay? But you're right, we need, to, we need to grow the youth. But we need to get the old people excited too. Us old people need to get excited. I don't care if you're 85 years old, you get excited, okay? I don't think anyone in here tonight that's 85, but I feel like 85. <laughs> but anyway, but hey, we need to get excited about what the Lord's doing. Yeah, y'all, yeah, y'all, yeah. I'm excited because I see God working. Yeah. In the fire, he did a good patch. Amen. I, I, you don't always see it. You kind of got blinders on, but then all of a sudden, when something happens, the blinders come off. Yeah. And you start seeing what God's doing. And I mentioned again that pruning hook. Uh, again, many of the time, he has to get the weeds out to make the garden grow. Okay? And it won't grow. It won't grow for a minute. And it's going to take some. Some fertilizer, it's going to take us some work getting some things done as well. But as he's pulling weeds, we need to be getting ready for the for the harvest. It, it's going to be a powerful harvest, okay? Brother Randy, Juan, did you have something you wanted? Yeah, when I pray, I pray for the sick. I pray for the church to grow. And, uh, you know, and, and for uh, this thank the Lord for giving us another day. Yeah. And, uh, when, you, when you're out and about, you, know, you see people on Sunday, they're, they're shopping, they're cutting their grass, they're pulling a boat. Uh, it's, it's so, uh, it just hurts my heart to see that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's what we need too. I think that's something we want right there is more prayer. I was privy to the cameras, I guess it was yesterday. Friday, Friday, not yesterday, Friday when I left here a little before six o'clock, these young men came in to the, was coming into the church almost six o'clock that evening. And they came here to pray. And Brother Abel doesn't know it, but I was watching him on that camera up there. As he walked down this aisle touching pews and talking to the Lord. 
And so I'm standing here tonight talking to the Lord. Now I don't know what he prayed, but my my thinking is he prayed for every one of you. He prayed for this church. He prayed for this pastor in the pulpit. He prayed for every one of you in the pews. These boys prayed. All of this church, they were moving through this church praying. Praying. If we don't get back to prayer, if we don't get back to praying, okay? A church that won't pray, I think, is a church where God won't stay. He just won't stay. He, he don't feel welcome, but he, he don't feel welcome if you're not praying. And I'm as guilty as anybody. Don't you think I'm not? I, I, I'll testify. I, 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 every time I get ready to pray, something happens. Something comes up. Something gets in my way. My prayer life has to be me in a closet somewhere. I mentioned this before, and I've been in this situation, and I have no problem with it. I have no problem with it. That's the way the pastor does it. That's the way he wants it. I have no problem with it. But I've been called up front. All these men would gather around the altar, and he'd say, Brother Steve, kick us off and start praying. And I said, Oh, heavenly Father, about that time, the whole room must stand. Everybody starts praying. And buddy, my mind is gone. I'm praying the guy's prayer next to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm being honest. I'm kind of praying the guy's prayer next to me. Nothing wrong with it. But for me to get a hold of God, I've got to get in my closet. My brother-in-law was dying of leukemia in Florida. And opened my Bible up to and I got to read it. And I got to cry. And I got to pray for it. And when I opened my eyes, I got to pray for what I thought was 30 minutes. My Bible was totally tear stained. I've been praying about five minutes. And I prayed for everything for him and his family. And I, I mean, I prayed for everything. But it felt like 30 minutes was five minutes. I pray five minutes. Surely, surely every one of us in this room, hey, surely we can give God five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. We can hunker down somewhere and, 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 and lift up the church and lift up the, the needs and lift up the sick to be healed. Now he may, hey, his healing may be different from what we're thinking of healing. He may take them home. But they're healed, I guarantee you. Yeah. Yeah. They're healed, I guarantee you. But hey, we need to pray that way. I talked to Miss, uh, I talked to Brother Roy a while ago, and Miss Trader was getting around on one cane now, I think, and got off at Walker already. That's great, everything's going good. The swimming hasn't come up in her foot. We need to pray for her to get literally back on her feet again, be able to get out and get moving again. We need to pray for, for the Lewis family and the Lewis, Rich Lewis family there as well. We need to pray. We need to pray that our church will hey, we'll, 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 we'll get back to itself again. What it's what it's always been. What it's always been. Okay. Well, I just want to. I guess I didn't mean to go there that far, but I, I just got to thinking about a text that said, "I hope you get exactly what you want." Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a message in that. There's a sermon right there. I hope you get exactly what you want. Because I know what I want. I know what I want. And I want to see souls saved. And boy, we're, 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 hey, we're marking that off as we go every week. It's gotten so almost every week there's one or two. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Jerk by the pit of hell because somebody came up and knocked on their door. Okay? Then that will grow a church, don't you think it won't? I guarantee you, Temple Baptist in Powell, Tennessee, goes visit. They go out knocking on doors. I guarantee you, Middle Tennessee knocks on doors. I guarantee you, Franklin Road knocks on doors. I guarantee you, Temple over here, hey, all the nerve knocks on doors. I guarantee you, if we're going to grow, we're going to knock on some doors, buddy. We better knock on some doors, and we better pass out some track, and we better invite anybody and everybody we see to church. Church, I don't care who they are or where they are. 
And they may tell you they got a church, but you never know what God's going to do. They may not be happy. They may not be doing anything in their church because they're not happy in their church with the way it's run, the way, the way the Bible's taught or not taught. Mostly not taught. Okay? Mostly not taught. Anybody got anything else they want to say? Go ahead, Brother Bob. My much prayer for this church is that we don't have such a thin skin and let the world influence us to the point where we hold back our testimony. Yeah. The fact that Satan attacks us when we do something gives us the authenticity that we are the children of God. And that should encourage us, not let these things that the world says to us discourage us from doing what God wants us to do. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, y'all keep your, uh, keep your, keep your uh, bookmarker on 1 Peter 2. <laughs> 2 there. And we're going to get to it. Maybe for Sunday or something, okay? All right. Let's stand and be dismissed in prayer. Brother Silas, won't you come with this message? Thank y'all for this. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for this day, Lord, and for the 4th of July. And why I so many years ago to break away from the tyranny of people. Yeah. Tyranny of kings. Now, Lord, we serve and need the tyranny of sin. It's, it's harder than ever. Well, the devil's fucking so many. Yeah. He's hurt so many people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so many people leave him, Father. Because the devil lied to him. Yeah. They took it and ran with it. Lord, I pray that you bless these people in this room. But We're still holding on. It. I pray that you give us a fire that can't be quenched. I pray, Lord, you clean us, cleanse our hearts. Help there be nothing between us and you, Lord. We need to be completely right with you, Father. Because we have our pastor. We yep. you encourage us. Yep. Help me keep on. He's helped so many, Lord. He's been helping us. Lord, I pray that you be with the church. And as everyone goes home, keep your hand on it. Father, we love you, Lord. Yeah. We pray and ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a good fortune. You like me. Say it.